بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to the class of Sira. Today, inshallah, we will discuss the incidents after the battle of Uhud. Uh, one of the incidents was the incident of Al-Raji'a. And Al-Raji'a is a well in the tribe of Banu Sulaym. What happened here? Two Two branches of this tribe, they are called Adl and Al-Qara. They came to the Messenger وسلم, requesting some of the people to go back with them to teach the people Islam. They said, we want some people to teach us Islam. So he sent with them almost six companions to Banu Hudayl. And in the way, they betrayed those companions. They betrayed those companions. And eventually, all of them got killed. Now, when they reached Hudayl, they said, look, we don't want to kill you, but we want to give you to Quraysh. Now, remember, the battle is not over, or the war is not over. Even if the battle is over, the battle of Uhud, the war itself is not over. So those people, Hudayl, they wanted to turn the Muslims in to get money. And that's part of the war between Muslims and non-Muslims. Even nowadays, you find some kuffar giving you money and telling you, turn in some Muslims to us and we will pay you money. So they betrayed the Muslims and they said, we will not harm you. We won't. We will just turn you into Quraysh. Now, some of the companions did not like that, and they refused. So they ran away, and they fought those people, and they got killed. Eventually, the kuffar outnumbered the Muslims. One of them was Asim ibn Thabit radiallahu an. Asim ibn Thabit radiallahu an. He pledged to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once he became a Muslim not to touch a mushrik and not to allow any mushrik to touch him. So he kept fighting them until he was martyred. Even after he was martyred, they said, that's fine. We will chop his head and we will sell his head. Because there was a woman in Quraysh, her name is Sulafa. She lost two of her sons, and she said, she swore to Allah that she will drink wine from the scalp of Asim ibn Thabit. That was the hatred they had to the Muslims. She wanted to drink alcohol from the head of Asim. So the kuffar, after they killed Asim, they said, we will still get money for his head. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a protection for him. What did Allah send? He sent hornets to protect Asim. So the kuffar were unable. Lots of hornets. They came and they were afraid to come closer. So they went back and they said, in the morning we will come again and we will take his body. We will take his head. They came in the morning, and they did not find the body. No, Umar Radilan said after he heard this story, he said he was sincere to what he did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him. He protected his body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered his body. So they did not find his body. This was the first one, Asim ibn Thabit radiallahu an. The second one was Zayd ibn Dithinna radiallahu an. Zayd ibn Dithinna, he also was captured and he did not like that. So he wanted to fight. But he was turned in. Eventually, he was turned in. And Safwan ibn Umayyah, wanted to kill him. 
because of his father, Umayyah bin Khalaf. So they took him outside the haram. Why? Because they used to respect the haram. They used not to kill inside the haram. So look at those kuffar. They, f they focus on very trivial things and they forget that they are shedding the blood of a believer. So they went, they took him and in the way, Abu Sufyan radiallahu an was with him in the way. He asked him, wouldn't you wish that you are safe and sound and Muhammad وسلم, in your place, that's before Abu Sufyan radiallahu an becomes a Muslim. He said, no, by Allah, not even a thorn pricks him. That was the love to the Messenger وسلم. So Abu Sufyan said, I never saw people love their leader as the companions and their love to the Messenger وسلم. Zayd ibn Dithinna. Zayd ibn Dithinna. And the last one I will mention is Khubayb ibn Adi radiallahu an. Khubayb ibn Adi, he was also imprisoned by a woman and she says she became a Muslim. That woman, she became a Muslim. And look, subhanallah, Abu Sufyan became a Muslim. And Safwan ibn Umayyah became Muslim. And all those people became Muslims because they saw the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested in those companions. This woman says, one day I saw with Khubayb grapes and there were no grapes in entire Mecca. He was imprisoned in her house. And they did not give him that grape. How he got these grapes? Allah only knows. So he asked her, he said, give me the razor. He wanted to shave, he wanted to prepare himself. He knew that he was getting killed. So she gave the razor or the knife to her son. And his son came and he gave him the knife. So he took the knife and he told his son, wouldn't your mother fear that I may kill you? His mother says, the moment I gave my son the knife and he left, I felt that now he could kill my son and if he was killed, then it is a man, one soul by another soul. So we lost everything. But Khubayb radiallahu an did not kill him. Even if they did injustice to him, he did not do injustice. Imagine that character. That the one that is going to kill you, you have his son, yet you don't kill his son. You know you are getting killed. But again, eventually, this woman became a Muslim. And that son himself became a Muslim. So they took him and they killed him. Before he was killed, he asked them, could you give me a few minutes to pray? And they allowed him to pray. Now again, you know you're dying. After five minutes, what do you do? Do you cry? Do you weep? Khubayb radiallahu he was the first one to establish this sunnah. The sunnah of the Torah ka. Now you know this will be the last thing you do in your life. So what is it going to be? It should be prayer. So he prayed to Raka, and after he finished, he said, By Allah, if it was not for the fear that you may say, I am afraid of death, I would have prolonged this prayer. He wanted to pray, but he did not want to prolong the prayer, so they would say, he is a coward, or he is afraid of death. And then he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell the Prophet sallallahu about what happened, and the Prophet sallallahu was told, Allah responded to the dua of Khubayb, and Khubayb radiallahu anh was martyred. One of the people who witnessed this incident in the time of Umar radiallahu anh, he became the ruler of Hims. And from time to time, he used to pass out. So the people complained to Umar that you hired someone who is inadequate. We don't know what's wrong with him. So one time Umar, when 
this man came, he asked him, what's wrong with you? He said, by Allah, every time I vision what I saw to Khubayb, that's what happens to me. I cannot help it. But again, he became Muslim. So this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those companions. They were martyred, but again, they gave the example for the Muslim martyr. Now, the hypocrites, and that's their norm, they won't stop. They started blaming those people. They started blaming the companions. They said, look at those people. They got killed. Neither did they accomplish the message, nor did they stay and be safe and sound. But was that the case? Unfortunately, sometimes you find people with good words, with a nice tongue, but we look at their work, they are doing nothing. They can criticize any other job, but when it comes to them, they do nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مِنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ وَهُوَ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ Those people, instead of praising what the companions did, they criticized them. Now the companions did nothing wrong. They responded to what the Prophet ﷺ told them to do. Well, they could not do it. They were killed. You blame them for being martyrs. You blame them not to stay at home. Even if they stay at home, they will be died. They will die any time. They did not accomplish the message. And they, they got killed. The second incident, and again, I want you to remember when these incidents are taking place. It was after the Battle of Uhud. So now Muslims are losing. The incident of Bir Ma'una. Another incident. The Prophet ﷺ cared about the da'wah. So he was delivering the message as much as he can to as many people as he can. One of the leaders came to him because he heard about the Messenger Wasallam. His name was Amir ibn Malik. His title was Mula'ib al-Asinna. He was very respected chief in the tribe of Amir. Mula'ib al-Asinna means the one who plays with the edges of the spears and swords. He was a courageous man. So the Prophet Wasallam offered him Islam, but Amir did not accept Islam. However, he was lenient. He brought, he brought a gift to the Messenger ﷺ. But the Prophet ﷺ told him, I cannot accept it from you if you don't become a Muslim. So this man told him, instead of just only telling me, if you send with me people to Najd, I can guarantee you that many people will respond to them. So he asked the Messenger ﷺ to send with him people that they can deliver the message, the da'wah. But the Prophet ﷺ told him, I am afraid from the other tribes. Now all that area nudged. Now why the Prophet ﷺ did not go there? Because all this area was filled with non-Muslims, with kuffar. Now you want to secure your own area. Again, this is a lesson. You don't jump to far away and you have your neighboring area where it's not Muslim. You start with the, na the neighboring areas first. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, I fear that they get killed. Amr ibn Malik told him, do not fear anything because I am giving them protection. And again in Arabia, remember this is, was the ultimate word when you say, I am giving him protection, no one can touch him. That was the custom, even if they don't follow the same religion. So Amr told the Prophet ﷺ, I am giving them protection. And upon that, the Prophet ﷺ sent with him 40 of the good companions. 40 of the good companions. So they reached the tribe of Amr. Once they reached the tribe of Amr, those companions, the 40, sent 
Haram ibn Milhan on their behalf to Amr ibn Tufail. Amr ibn Tufail was also one of the chiefs. Amr ibn Tufail, he was a kafir, so he killed, he killed Haram ibn Milhan. He did not even listen to anything he is saying. He killed him right away. And he asked his tribe to help him killing the remaining 39 companions. But they refused. And they said, they are given protection by Mula'ab al-Asinna, Amr ibn Malik. Yet he insisted, and eventually the remaining companions were killed. All of them were killed, except for two. Two companions were not with the 40. They were outside for, for, uh, to get some water or something. When they came, they found out that their companions were killed, all of them. So one of them said, I will not go back. How can I go back and my friends were killed? So he went and he fought them and he got killed also. Now only one is left. Amr ibn Umayyah al-Damri radiallahu anhu. Amr ibn Umayyah al-Damri, he said, I will go back to tell the Prophet sallallahu that this is what happened to us. This man gave us protection, but the tribes betrayed him. And eventually we are killed. Amr ibn Umayyah went in the way back and he met with two people from the tribe of Amr. He asked them, where are you from? They said, we are, we are from Amr. So he said, this is my chance. They killed 40, I'm going to kill two. He remained with them, they slept, so he killed both of them. And he went to the messenger, وسلم. It turned out that those two people were given protection from the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Amr ibn Umayyah radiallahu did not know that. He told him, this is what happened to my companions. So the Prophet ﷺ was very upset. And he said, this is because of Mula'ab al-Asinna, Abu Bara. That's him. This is what he did. Abu Bara himself, he was also very upset. How could people deny his protection? He sent his son and his son killed Amr ibn Tufail the one who caused this to happen. Now, the Prophet ﷺ did not tell Amr ibn Umayyah, it is good you killed two people even though they were given my protection. He said those two people were innocent and I am going to pay the blood money. Look at the justice of the Messenger ﷺ. Forty of his companions were killed by this tribe and those only two people, yet he did not say, this is because of this, an eye for an eye. He said, I have to pay the blood money. This tribe betrayed me and killed my companions. I won't betray them. These meanings, you need to show it to the people, especially to the non-Muslims, that this is the sunnah of the Messenger, Wasallam. That's the Prophet, Wasallam, the merciful. Unfortunately, people don't know. Forget non-Muslims, even Muslims. Many of them, they don't know these, these incidents. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to pay the blood money. Now remember, this is still in a time where the Islamic State was in the process of built, getting built and established. And two, the blood money for two people is not few money, it is a lot. It's almost 200 camels. So you need the help. Who was in treaty with the tribe of Amr? One of the tribes of the Jews, which is Banu Nadir. Banu and Nadir. And that takes us to the expulsion of this tribe. How this happened, the Prophet ﷺ went to those Jews. He wanted their help. He told them, help me. Help me with the blood money. Why he went to them? First, there was an agreement between the Prophet ﷺ and the Jews. Now this incident happened to him. So they should help him. He did not ask their help in the battle of Badr or Uhud because that was not in the agreement, but this is in the agreement. So he asked their help. And they had agreement with Banu Amir. 
so they could help. The Prophet ﷺ asked their help. And they said, okay. Now, the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr, and Umar, in the tribe of Banu Nadir, in their own place. So the Jews said, it is our chance. Let's kill him and get rid of him. One man said, Amr bin Jahash, he said, why not do it? He asked one of the people to go on the top of the roof and throw a big rock over the messenger وسلم, and he will get killed and we will get rid of him. The Prophet وسلم, was leaning on the wall of that house and Jibreel السلام, came and he told him, go quickly because that's what's going to happen. They are intending to do that to you. So the Prophet ﷺ left and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. The companions were waiting. They did not know what happened. They were waiting for a long time. The Prophet ﷺ is gone. They don't know where he's gone to. Until one man told them, I saw him entering Medina. So they went back to Medina and the Prophet ﷺ told them, this is what happened and I have to go to fight those people. Because they bre breached the covenant with the Messenger ﷺ. They intended to kill him. So the Prophet ﷺ surrounded Banu Nadir. And he wanted to kill all of them. But is it permissible to kill all of them? No. Then how the Prophet ﷺ would do something like that? Hmm? The, what about the men? Now all the men tried to kill the Messenger وسلم? No, only two or three agreed. So why the Prophet وسلم wants to fight all of them? When you do something and I cover up over you, am I not also responsible? Shouldn't I turn you in and tell you this is, this is the one, you should punish him? All of them all the Jews, they wanted to protect those men who did it. So all of them are partners in this crime. Now remember, every single tribe of the Jews, they betrayed the Messenger وسلم, and they breached the covenant. First were Banu Qaynuqa, now Banu Nadir. But again, look at the firmness of the Prophet وسلم. He did not say, I lost 40 men, and before that I lost six, and before that I lost. Now I don't want to lose. You have to be strict and firm in this situation. Now again, the hypocrites, one more time. They came to the Jews and they said, we are supporting you. Do not, do not listen to Muhammad. So the, the Jews were patient and they did not turn in anybody and they were fine inside inside that their dwelling so the prophet ﷺ asked the companions to cut off the trees their trees their palm trees in general this is not permissible are you allowed to destroy others properties no but this was a war and you want to win the war so if you're allowed to kill them kill the souls. Don't, aren't you allowed to, to burn the trees? That was the purpose. It is unlike what people do nowadays and they tell you, oh, it is permissible. They burn the entire land and they kill everybody. No, that was not the case. So Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul came again. Not only he encouraged the, the kuffar, the, the Jews to stay, he came to the Prophet وسلم, and he told him, you cannot kill them. They are my allies. You have to forgive them. And the Prophet ﷺ refused, refused. And Abdullah insisted one time, another time, until again the Prophet ﷺ, the merciful, he agreed. Finally, he told them they can leave safely. I won't kill any one of them. But whatever they leave, it is our property. That's what Allah ta'ala has given us. Whatever they can take, it is them. It is for them. So they left and they tried as much as they can to carry with them 
and they destroyed the remaining things. They themselves de destroyed it. And that's the norm of the Jews. They don't want you to benefit from anything. So they left and they were expelled to Khaybar. This is the second tribe of the Jews that breaches the covenant with the Messenger وسلم, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the entire story of Banu Nadir in what surah? Again, the Quran is the source of history of Islam. In what surah? No, not Surah Al-Anfal. In Surah Al-Hashr. In Surah Al-Hashr, and that's your homework. Read Surah Al-Hashr. Read Surah Al-Hashr. In it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of Banu Nadir. Because I may ask you in the exam about one or two of the ayat. You need to know all the details from the tafsir of Surah Al-Hashr. Surah Al-Hashr in which chapter? In the Juz 28th. It's the second surah after Surah Al-Mujadila. Okay? And we will stop here, inshallah.